Hey everybody, you don't even know what's about to hit you in this video. Like, I am so excited about this idea. I have been excited about it for a good two weeks now. I have an old school caboodle, and yes, I bought it new. It would be cooler if I had, like, my old caboodle from years and years ago. I think it was pink glitter, and I'm not sure. My mom probably repurposed that to hold, like, uh, bobby pins and old buttons in a drawer or something like that. And if you follow me on Twitter, you know what's going on because I was tweeting about this and by the way I've got a weird lash situation. I am wearing the most stubborn set of lashes known to man. I think the brand is Tarte and they just did not want to play nice this morning especially this side. It feels so weird so sorry about that. Anyways I was saying on Twitter how I was perusing Ulta's website as I tend to do and I realized they were selling like the classic caboodles on there and I was immediately drawn in and I thought wouldn't that be fun to have an old school classic caboodle? The mint green and lavender, you know, is that about as old school as it gets? Even this little, like, clasp here at the front, that's totally the way it used to be. And it's called the On The Go Girl Classic Case. Kept the tag so I can tell you that. Everything about the way it is on the inside is what I remember an old school caboodle to be. Like, it holds a lot of stuff. This is heavy. As I lift it up here, I could work out with this. So several things happened here. At first, I decided I wanted the caboodle, so I tweeted about it, and then I I got massive support to buy the caboodle. Then when I thought I could use this for shop my stash items and it would be so perfect because here's like an old caboodle, I'm going through my stash, I'm finding older stuff, it just all totally seems to work. I don't have to use any other part of my storage for the shop my stash stuff. It can just, you know, have its own little home here that always rotates out to like on a monthly basis. I really want to get back to that. And so once I had that plan in place, the thing was getting bought. And I also know I'm really enthusiastic about an idea when I text both Kristen and David to tell them what I'm about to do. So here's the caboodle all opened up in its plasticky goodness. This opens here. Yes, there's a nice sized mirror. You've got that tray here with a couple compartments, even a little lift out thingy here. And then I've got so much bulky stuff down in the bottom, like containers of loose powder and foundations. And it's like, yeah, this is this was built to hold some makeup. So please let me know in the comments section if you have a caboodle lurking around your house and you're going to do this too. Like if I can get anybody else to do this with me, I think that'd be awesome. But um, Ulta is selling them if you're just crazy enough to get a new one like I am. But let's go through. I want to tell you what I've shopped my stash for. Some of these are like older products that have been around for quite some time in my collection. Some of them like new-ish things that I just really want to make a point to use. And if you got a big makeup collection, you got to do this stuff on purpose. Like you really have to go through, look at what you have, take inventory from time to time. Oh, and by the way, what happened to decluttering on my channel? Well, I'm going to tell you the sad, honest truth about that. When I declutter, <laughs> I use the the top of my desk here to sit out some things. You know, I gotta make the piles of the stuff to keep and the stuff that's a maybe and the stuff that needs to go away. I need to do some sorting. And I know concealer will be coming next and it's gonna be a bear of a project. There's a lot of concealer there. Well, the top of my table is so cluttered right now that I will have to declutter my tabletop before I can even think about decluttering what's inside that drawer. My mornings are so rushed here. Like, I'm sitting down to do my video. I mean, I'm giving the videos all the time they need, but when I'm done, I am out that door and done. <laughs> And so I've got like mess upon mess sitting on this table of products and brushes and different things that just need to be put away, you know, go back to their homes in this room. So until that mess gets cleaned up, I can't deal with the mess of concealer in my drawer. That's real life. Okay, let's get back to the caboodle. <laughs> I'm crazy. I'm going nuts. Okay, um, the Smashbox Photo Finish uh, Radiance Primer with Hyaluronic Acid. I kept this around after the primer declutter because I said I wanted to use it. And guess what? I haven't really reached for it. So I used it today and I'm gonna make sure to use that as it is part of my caboodle uh, shot my stash stuff. I grabbed out a couple of foundations. One is the Lottie London Selfie Ready Medium Coverage Foundation. Really enjoyed this and actually loved a lot of the stuff from this brand. If you watched that video from, I don't know, several months ago, I was very impressed and I used this yesterday and I was like, yes, I really like that. And then the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Elixir. Here's another thing that like once I reviewed it, I just found myself moving on 
to other things that I needed to try out. So I want to give this some more time, and I'm wearing this today. And this definitely gives a lot of like healthy life and radiance to the skin. The Lottie London has a nice natural look on the skin, but it's going to be more matte than the CoverGirl. So I wanted a couple options there. Um, concealer wise, my gosh, the the brands I'm talking about here, this is so random. Like as I was shopping my stash, I was thinking, I bet there is nobody on this planet who has this random of an assortment of brands in their caboodle, or maybe they do. Um, I got a CoverGirl Smoothers Concealer Stick. This is not that old. Like I, I don't remember when I got this exactly, but it wasn't that long ago. I have it in light. I was playing with that yesterday, and it's actually a really decent concealer stick. Remember the CoverGirl Plus Olay Concealer Sticks? It feels a lot like that formula. A couple things here from Bobbi Brown. I've got the Corrector in Bisque. I completely wiped out one of these quite some time ago, so this is my second one. A nice peachy corrector, and then I've got the Natural Creamy Concealer Kit here. So this is natural, and this is the Pale Yellow Powder. So I've got all of this working on my under eye today, and I really like that stuff, but I just hadn't been reaching for it. Kogendo Moisture Concealer. Have I ever even talked about this on my channel? I got this off of Beautylish some time ago. I thought it had kind of a peachy corrector shade and then a couple of creamy concealers here also. Great product, great um, consistency to the concealer, but it needs to be getting used. It kind of actually reminds me a little bit of the Sonia Kashuk um, Hidden Agenda Concealer. That's been another great rediscovered product as of late. I think you're going to come away from this thinking, how did she fit that much in the caboodle? But it's not even packed. It could hold more. Um, I got a couple of loose powders here. I need to step out of my loose powder comfort zone, which tends to be the Laura Mercier if I'm going to do any baking. And then I also love the Too Faced uh, Peach Powder, just kind of an all-over dusting. But I've had in my collection for some time this Cover FX Perfect Setting Powder. I really need to see how this stacks up against those other powders. Today I'm just wearing this lightly all over. I need to test it more in a baking sense. But another one that I wanted to give a little more attention to is my Kat Von D Lock It Brightening Powder in Petal. And this has kind of a soft peachy tone to it. But I have the Cover FX in Translucent Light. Are you a fan of this? Like, what do you like to use it for best? Is it more an all-over thing or is it a baking thing? Tell me your preferences there. I want to try it different ways. I pulled out a couple of bronzers, one of which I'm wearing today. That's the Too Faced Sun Bunny. Uh, I haven't been given a whole lot of love to this, but this is a shimmery bronzer. It's got some glow to it. And I'm wearing especially the darker side on my skin today. And I'm feeling a lot of radiance with this look. So I I think that worked out well. And then I've got my e.l.f. Uh, bronzer palette in Deep, which I believe I compared this shade to uh, Marc Jacobs bronzer that's been really popular lately. e.l.f. makes some really great, nicely pigmented powder compacts in this format. There's a lighter version for bronzer. There are different good blush ones. There's an awesome highlighting palette, so definitely something to look into. But I just love how pigmented they are, and I used the whole dang thing on my face yesterday. Let's talk blushes for a second. I've got this awesome Tom Ford blush in frantic pink that uh, Kristen actually had gifted to me a long time ago. And you know how it is with special products, like especially a gift product, you kind of just want to sit it on the shelf, have it look pretty and not touch it. Because you know, what if I used it up? It wouldn't be here anymore. I need to just love it and use it because it's a really pretty blush shade. I also found a Makeup Geek blush that I want to use. This is in the shade called Puppy Love. I thought this was kind of an interesting like matte mauve neutral shade. It's looking even more like mauve pink on camera than it did just, I don't know, in my regular lighting. And then Ioni Cosmetics. Does that name ring a bell for anybody? If it does, you have been around on my channel for a while. This is the color Goddess. Kind of a satin finish blush here. Sort of rusty. I thought it'd be so pretty with different warm shadow looks that I might do this time of year. But this is like a Fred's super dollar item. I remember when I discovered these blushes. Just amazingly pigmented, gorgeous blushes from this line. It's called Ioni. And I'm actually wearing a little bit of Goddess on my look on my cheeks today. Pulled out several highlights today. I got the uh, Makeup Revolution Vivid Baked Highlight in Golden Lights. Gorgeous. This is so pretty. And uh, Makeup Revolution, isn't that intense, you guys? They have several highlights in this format, and I've always found the Golden Lights one to be the most, um, I don't know, profound. It's just so brightening. Also, the one I'm wearing today, and this is such a rediscovered, like, awesome thing here. This Becca um, Shimmering Skin Perfector in Prismatic Amethyst. I'm wearing that on the tops of my cheeks. Really buffed it in. It's so pretty. Like, why are people not, like, talking about this every single day? How gorgeous this is. I just... 
Mmm, love that shade. It's extra brightening because it's got that little bit of pinky lilac thing going on in it. Also, this NYX Away We Glow Liquid Highlight in Crystal Glare. I'm gonna be trying to use this and see just how similar it might be to the Becca Liquid highlights because it seems to have a really nice sheen across the skin and no flecks, no chunks in it whatsoever. So I think I'm going to love playing around with that. I've pulled out a few eyeshadow palettes, kind of some smaller things. I know I'm still like in the thick of some holiday stuff. And so I know realistically I am going to be needing to gravitate toward the newer stuff at times. But when I'm wanting to go for my Shop My Stash stuff, I've got a few things in here. My Viseart Bridal Satin Palette. I don't know if I've even told y'all that I had this, but um, I've used it several times, not nearly enough, and how beautiful is this? Halfway through the video, Eve needed to be fed. I'm out of breath from just coming up the stairs. It's light outside now. I mean, I just love the color selection, the texture of the shades. They do all have some shimmer, but you can totally still work with this palette and this palette alone, which might sound crazy, but they're really gorgeous shades and Viseart does, you know, these shimmers or satin finished colors so, so well. So I'm excited to use that some more. Also, what I used on my eyes today is this Kat Von D, um, the little quad in smoke. I remember when she came out with these smaller quads and I know I feel like I'm drawing on to the pumpkin, the cranberry type shades this time of year. I love that warmth, those fall tones, but a good cool smoky eye. That's what I'm working with today and I really love it so much. This shade is so good right here paired with these kinds of colors. Like if you ever find yourself with, you know, just that gradient of black to gray to white and all that, try to also find a color like this, which is just a dusty kind of matte taupe and throw that in because that helps the blending so much with a look like this. So I'm enjoying that. And then I also got this guy out. Remember when I created, oops, little brush. You guys remember when I created my own Buxom palette? You can go to the store, you can do it online, you can pick out different shades that you want. Six colors to make your own custom palette. And I made like world's most random palette here. But I was playing with this the other day and I'm like, yes, those are really nice shadows. And I do kind of like what I threw in here. It could create a lot of different looks. Those are actually really nice quality eyeshadows. Now I'm guilty of always reaching for the exact same eyeshadow primer, although I'm not going to apologize because I love Milani eyeshadow primer, but I also have some others that I should probably test out. I have this Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion in Fix, and I also have the one in Sin. So I know Sin is more of like a shimmery finish. This has been around for a long time. A lot of you guys have probably used it, but see that like kind of borderline pinky glow that that has. So it could be nice to like really make a statement on the lid, you know, with a shimmery shadow. And then Fix is very um, like skin tone, a little bit yellow tone. Totally will like blank out any discoloration on your lids. So we're talking two really different formulas from what I'm used to. Today I used Fix and I was like, wow, you really got to make a point to smooth that stuff out. Like in the future, I might actually use a brush to put that on because it's not just like this sheer sort of lightweight eye primer. There's really a thickness and an opacity to the formula on your lids. So you got to be careful with that, I guess. I have a couple of these things from Clarins and they look gorgeous. Has anybody ever used the Ombre Iridescent Cream to Powder Long Lasting Shadows? I have Silver Pink and Silver Plum. I feel like I would love Silver Plum for a one shadow look or like do a one shadow look with that and then just pop a little bit of this one right on the lid or something. Thing. I don't know, they feel really nice, like a very beautiful texture of eyeshadow, but I want to see if they can hang on their own or like what exactly the best way to use these will be. But they do claim to be long lasting, so we'll see about that. Grab my Total Tease mascara from CoverGirl because I do really like this one, but I want to make a point to actually use it and finish it up before it dries out. Also my Givenchy Base Mascara Perfecto, uh, remember this from my super high end video. This is one of those things where I don't know that I totally love this product so much, but I did spend some money on it and I want to make sure I experiment with it at least with different mascaras. So I've got that in here. It's actually a pink lash primer. And then
then I have a couple of brow things. Um, even though I really love that e.l.f., the Instant Lift brow pencil is working really great for me, but I grabbed out this Makeup Forever brow pencil, number 40, very classic, just standard pencil. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't get more pencil-like than that. And it's a very cool, kind of medium to deep brown. And then also this Tarte Arch Architect brow pencil in gel. I was really getting into this for a period of time, and then I don't know what happened. Um, it's kind of a teardrop shaped, um, somewhat triangular, I guess, uh, brow pencil, so it's a little bit on the thick side. Fills in the brows pretty quickly, and I'm wearing that today, by the way. And then the gel holds so nicely. It's just a clear gel on the other side, so that's kind of a handy, quick duo. I didn't want to overwhelm myself with eyeliners because if I'm not doing a super glam look, a lot of times I do skip the eyeliner. But one that I would like to work into a look is this Infallible Paints in Wild Green. So this is a pin type eyeliner, just a rich forest green, pretty much the shade that you see there on the outer packaging. So I thought that would be fun. Also these Maybelline Color Tattoo Eye Chromes, which I would use in very much the same way I would use those Infallible Paints cream eyeshadows. But I have a great green here. What's this called? Electric Emerald and then Beige Luster are the two. And I thought this would also be a pretty eyeliner. So maybe I could work all of this into a look together. And then a couple of just drugstore eyeshadows here. I was feeling nostalgic, okay? I pulled out my um, CoverGirl Shimmering Sands Trio just for a quick look, you know? Nothing beats that. I would like to pull that out again. And then Neutrogena Nourishing Longwear Eyeshadow with built-in primer in Classic Nude. I think I reviewed this one and another one that I had in my collection quite a while ago, but these are very nice soft eyeshadows. With lip stuff, keeping in mind the fact that I've still got some holiday type lip collections to try out, I grabbed five things from my stash. One is the thing I'm wearing now, which really feels kind of like a, a lip treatment, I suppose. It's from Clarins, and it's the Instant Light Natural Lip Perfector in 08. You know, I've had this for a while. I think I may have talked about this before. It smells like cake mix like a vanilla cake mix. That's just the instant thing that comes to mind. But it's got this little doe foot, the kind where product comes up through, and it is kind of a sheer thing. Like some of this may have worn off a little bit while I was downstairs, but I'll reapply some. It's a little bit of a sheer plum. Like it's a light amount of color, but it feels really nice on the lips, like a little shine, but almost like kind of a thick lip treatment is what I think of when I put this on because it's very hydrating. Lipstick wise, I pulled out one of my CoverGirl Outlast lipsticks. These are really, really long wearing. I'm not even sure if they still sell them, but I have 955 here, which is kind of a spicy deep brick red. Comes off basically matte on the lips. Another matte lipstick I got, um, Maybelline's formula is fantastic. Siren and Scarlet. Such a nice matte red lipstick. I grabbed one of the lipsticks from the Maybelline Bolds collection. This one's called Mauve It. I like to mauve it, mauve it. And this one is um, kind of a cream, I would say, a cream formula. It doesn't have an amazing amount of shine, but it's not quite as flat as their matte lipsticks, if that makes sense. Really pretty shade there. Sometimes these mauve colors are kind of hard to make sense of, but I see me wearing that a lot, and I wish I would have worn it more. <laughs> and then also I've got this Bite Amuse Bouche lipstick in Beetroot. I can't remember where this came from. I think I got this in a set, but this is, this is me, you know. That's my berry right there. So I love that shade. I have barely used this color though. And I think this time of year is the perfect time to get it going. So how'd I do guys? I think I got some really freaking random things in my caboodle this month. And I really want to do this more. I'm trying to really take inventory of my stash on a monthly basis, get more on top of the decluttering too, but also just going through and, and appreciating those things that I have, pulling them out, getting use out of them. I get a lot of satisfaction out of that. And hopefully it's satisfying to you the viewer to see me going back to things that I've talked about and have really loved and getting use out of them all over again. So thank you guys so much for your time. I hope this was fun and I will see you again next time. Bye.